Hello there, this is Dr. Norman Thomas, and welcome to tonight's edition of Power Talk. And we're going to get started right after this announcement. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, listen to this. God says, let's make man in our image and after our likeness. Imagine that you made in the image of God. When I got revelation of this, it blew my mind because think about it, the word image alone, it means an exact duplicate. It means a precise copy. It means a true mirror reflection of another. This means that you and I have been gifted with a quality that most people have never tapped. We literally have the divine nature of God within us, especially once you're born again, born anew, now you're operating with a divine quality. Hello there, welcome back. You know, as we talk about giving tonight, I want to remind you of the attitude where our giving is concerned. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, that God loves a cheerful giver. You know what that means? I have here, it means one who's voluntary in their giving. Number two, one who has great enthusiasm in their giving. And then thirdly, one who gives without hesitation. I'll say it again one who is voluntary in their giving, one who has great enthusiasm in their giving, and one who is without hesitation in their giving. The Bible says God loves that kind of giver. And that's the kind of giver that I endeavor to be. We all should endeavor to be that kind of giver. In the body of Christ, we have great cause to give because we are advancing the work the ministry, the service of God throughout the globe, throughout the world. Here at New Life Church International, here at Power Talk, we do the same. We are advancing God's kingdom through his message by virtue of an instrument that we call the School of Faith Bible Institute that's literally all over the world, at least in five continents around the world. And we have men and women who have taken up the charge to advance that message through that curriculum. And it's going primarily to leadership around the world in the body of Christ. And then here locally at home, we're helping people get back on their feet. We're helping to feed people, to love people, and to promote their welfare through food service. We have, we have launched our food bank here at New Life Church International, and we're receiving canned goods. You ought to send your canned goods right here to New Life Church International, or the next time you go and, and uh, prepare to buy groceries for your family, pick up a case of canned goods for the New Life Food Bank. And we're blessing this community uh, one family at a time this way. On Easter weekend, we're going to be hosting a food giveaway here on the campus at 3000 East Goche Road here in Lake Charles. And we're going to bless families with food. And that's why we're receiving canned goods at this time because we want to make sure that we're able to bless many families. And don't forget Easter Sunday, by the way, while we're talking about it. Easter Sunday morning, we're opening the church for a live service, an in-person service. As you know, we've not been holding in-person services because of COVID-19, but more so because of the condition of our facility post-hurricane. But we're getting that moving and, and construction will begin shortly as we're waiting right now on a delivery date for the materials for our roofing to come in. So it's, it's happening. Meanwhile, stay connected to the word right here on, on YouTube, right here on Facebook. And also pretty soon, starting March 1, we'll be on cable on, uh, uh, now I can't think of the name of the, uh, the station. Uh, I'm going to think of the name of that station. But anyway, it, it is the station out of Lafayette and uh, where we will be providing daily 
uh, broadcasting on that station Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday in the mornings and on Sundays at 5.30 p.m. And so uh, by the time we come back from this uh, break and give you opportunity to give, I'll have the name of that station for you. I'll be right back after this. Dreaming is one of the most important things that you can do in your life. You were actually born for it. You were designed by God to dream. Because it engages the imagination. God gave you that imagination so that you could literally see what he says. God has big, big plans for you. He's got big things that he desires for you to do. But nothing can come to you except it first comes through you. So don't let anything and don't let anybody stop you from dreaming. Dream big and dream big on purpose. Easter Sunday is one of the most attended church days of the year. It is a celebration of the resurrection of Christ. So let us use this day as an opportunity to share Jesus with those we know. Invite your family and friends. We will also share in communion. Hello, this is Dr. Norman Thomas. It has been said that this is the year of restoration in the body of Christ. That means everything lost, everything stolen, must be given back. But the first area of restoration has to happen in a particular area. It's the restoration of the soul. I am beginning a new series in Power Talk called Spirit, Soul, and Body. And I am going to be joined by a panel of distinguished guests. My wife, Dr. Debbie Thomas, a clinical therapist, and she's going to help us understand the importance of the soul in the process of restoration. And then I have Dr. Antonio Rivera, a chiropractic specialist, who will also help us understand the response of the body to the spirit and the response of the body to the soul. It's time to live a healthy life. We're living in some very, very challenging days. But I don't believe that that should prevent us from moving forward and progressing in life. I do believe that as the spirit of a man goes, so goes his soul and his body. I can't wait for you to join me for this series. Join Dr. Norman Thomas for Power Talk, Tuesday nights at 6.30 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook. Spirit, Soul, and Body. Episodes air February 16th. Giving is simple and secure. If you'd like to give, just text the word GIVE to our giving number and tap the link. From here, you can give any amount you'd like. Choose what you give to and make it a one-time or recurring gift. It's that simple. For your first time, you'll need to register to complete your gift. After that, you can give again, anytime, anywhere. Just text the word GIVE. Welcome back. And today, oh yeah, by the way, that station is called Family Vision. It's out of Lafayette. It is a sister station to the radio station, KAJN Radio. But this is the television station, Family Vision. And every day on, on Suddenlink Cable, right here locally, you'll, you can find that airing uh, every morning at 8.30 a.m. And I think they replay it again in the evenings or at night at 11 or 11.30 p.m. I will get all that for you and you'll have that exact information. It won't be long, I'll be, I'll be hosting the owner of Family Vision here at Power Talk in a few weeks down the road. But next week, February the 16th, we have Spirit, Soul, and Body. And that's gonna be a powerful episode. Actually, it's three shows, and it's gonna be a powerful episode of understanding the dynamics of what's going on inside of you during this, during this time that we're living in, and, and how you're to allow your spirit to lead the way and let it train and teach your, your soul and your body 
how to function. It's a powerful set. Uh, Dr. Debbie will be joining us and Dr. Antonio Rivera will be joining us. So you don't want to miss the next three weeks of Power Talk. Okay, well, let's get into tonight's teaching. Tonight we're talking about, is it God's idea or is it your idea? Let's go ahead and open up <clears throat> with our opening passage of scripture. It's found in Proverbs 14 and 12. It says, there is a way that seems right to a man and appears straight before him, but at the end of it is the way of death. There is a way that seems right. That right there is very, very powerful to our understanding because we've been trained that if it feels right, it's right. If it looks right, it's right. If it sounds right, it's right. If it feels right, it's right. But what the Bible has to say is that what that which appears to be right, that seems to be right, maybe say on the basis of logic, on the basis of reason or rationale, may not always be right. And all that means is for you and for me as believers, if you are a believer listening to me, and if you're not, there's no better time than now to become a believer, to, to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. But as a believer, there is more to it than that which meets the eye. For everything, for every situation, for, for every circumstance that we're facing in our lives, we cannot afford to judge things on the basis of face value. We must be led by God, by the Spirit of God, to discern what is right and what is wrong, and to discern the way in which we are to go. Now, on, on these notes, which, by the way, are online, if you go to our website, normanthomas.org, I think on the screen it'll say nlcinternational.org, and you go to the media page, and you go down to the bottom of that page, you'll find these notes right there on our website. You can download them to your device, or you can print them out if you're in a place where you can print your notes. Now, <clears throat> I talk about here the path of God's idea. Now, God's idea has its own path. Your idea has its own path. Remember what God said in Isaiah? He says, my ways are not like your ways. So there's a separation of God's way from the way of the unrenewed mind uh, of mankind. So there's a path at which God's think that of which God, let me say it again. There is a path by which God thinks upon. And there is a path by which we think upon. And so what I want to talk about today is the path of God's ideas. Now I'm going to use a scripture that Jesus taught on in the book of Matthew to illustrate this. It's Matthew chapter 7 and verse 13 in the Amplified Translation. Here's what it says. It says, enter through the narrow gate, the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and spacious and broad is the way that leads away to destruction. And many are those who are entering in through it. But the gate is narrow. It is contracted by pressure, pressure from the outside. And the way is straightened and compressed that leads uh, a way to life. And few are those who find it. Wow. So he's saying there are many ways, there are many people who are on the path that leads to destruction. And there are a few people on the path that leads to life. Now, before you get into, oh my God, I wonder if I'm on the path to life. You know, am I one of the few? Yes, if you're asking that question, you're probably one of the few. And meaning, few don't mean few as in our definition of few. Few meaning as compared to the droves of people that are on the path that is broad and that leads to destruction. Now, on my notes here, I say that this, this scripture suggests that there should be a premeditated decision to travel the path 
where we are led by God through growth opportunities, which leads to life. That's a lot of words, but I'm going to say it again. This scripture suggests that there should be a premeditated decision to travel the path where we are led by God through growth opportunities, which leads to life. So notice what he says Many are on the path that is wide and spacious. Well, that's why it's wide and spacious. It's wide and spacious to accommodate the droves of people that choose that path, as opposed to the number of people that choose the narrow path. You don't have that many. Why? Because the pathway that is wide and spacious is usually the path that is that has the least amount of resistance in it, the least amount of pressure in it. You know, one thing I found out about a lot of Christians is that they don't want to go through anything. They don't want to experience any trouble, any adversity, any problems in their lives, as if their coming to Christ exempts them from trouble, adversity, or trials. That is not the truth. There's nothing in the Bible that suggests that once you come into Christ, all of a sudden you're exempt from problems, you're exempt from adversities and so forth. No, it simply means that now, whereas you were trying to navigate through adversity, problems and trouble without God, now you have companionship through those tough moments, not only companionship, but you have guidance and you have wisdom that gets you through those tough times, those times of adversity, those times of trouble, those times of hardship, which Jesus and the scriptures promises you're going to experience. But Jesus said something. He says, but be of good cheer. In other words, not, not, not so fast. Don't get depressed about this. Be of good cheer, he says, because I have overcome the world, which means if I get with Jesus and let him in me and I in him and stay connected to him as that branch is connected to that vine, then I'm going to be okay. Yes, I'm going to encounter trouble, but I now have uh, the I have access to victory over my troubles. It's not that I don't have any problems anymore, but now I have access to the problem solver. So this path that that is represented by God's ideas, it is the path which is contracted by pressure. It is the path that is straightened and compressed, but it leads to the way of life. So my notes here says God's ideas are usually not met with the path cloaked with the popularity of the masses. In other words, it's just not the way everybody's going, and it's usually not what everybody else is doing. <laughs> I, I, won't, I had an, I, a thought that came to my mind, but I don't, it didn't really relate to this. Anyway, so, and then I have a note that says, God's idea is usually not the easiest, nor is it the least resistant way in the natural to accomplish the things that you're trying to accomplish. So, if you're looking for the easy way out, you're probably on the wrong path. If you're looking for uh, the opportunity to avoid trouble, to avoid adversity, you're probably on the wrong path. And if you feel like that you never have any problems, that you never have any trouble in your life, you're probably on the wrong path because if you're on the right path, the enemy certainly would be resisting you. But that's nothing to fear about that because you have the power and the authority as Jesus mentioned in Luke 10, 19, to overcome and overpower every work of the enemy against you. And so you are well equipped, is what I'm trying to say, to overcome. As a matter of fact, that scripture talks about treading. I give you power and authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions. I think Luke 10, 19 in the Amplified Translation says it, that, says it that way, that you are given power 
ability and authority to tread. And to tread over something means to, to plow over it as if there is no resistance whatsoever. And you have the power to live that way and to walk that way when you are resisted by the enemy with adversity and with trouble. So, God's path is not always the path that you would choose in the natural because it may be accompanied with pressure, <laughs> but it is the path that leads to life. And when I think of life, I think of life as Jesus described it in John 10, 10, John 10 and 10, life in abundance to the full till it overflows. And the second thing here that I want to share with you tonight on this God's idea or your idea is that, uh, well, let me just let's go right to it in the scripture. It's Luke 12 and verse 16. Now, I want you to listen to this. Now, I'm going to read, but we're going to walk through this and because this is a parable that Jesus shared with his disciples, and it really exposes and opens up our teaching tonight to the idea, am I operating by God's idea in life, or am I operating by my own idea in life? Now, on the notes here, it's in the Amplified Translation. It's Luke chapter 12, and it's verse 16. It says, Then he told them a parable, saying, The land of a rich man was fertile and yielded plentifully, and he considered and debated within himself, What shall I do? Now, the situation here is, he says, I have no place in which to gather together my harvest. And so he said, I will do this. I will pull down my storehouses and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain or produce and all my goods. Now I want to stop right there because this man asked himself a question. And he asked a question which challenges our ideas against God's idea. At that moment, it was a question that challenged his ideas that he's about to enter into against God's idea. He's asking himself a question, and the question is, hmm, how shall I do this? What shall I do? Now, you're either asking yourself that question about that particular situation. For some people, it may be whether to move to another city or to take a new a change in a career opportunity or get a new job or choose a job or choose a field to study in or uh, whether or not to engage in a relationship with a person or to marry a person or what have you. And you're asking yourself the question, what shall I do? Now, are you asking yourself the question or is it that your spirit is asking God the question? Because you're going to come up with an answer. And that answer is going to either be God's idea or it's going to be your idea. And this man literally did that. He asked the question and he asked it. He asked the question to himself, what shall I do? And he did not wait to hear. He did not wait to see what God would say and he proceeded with his own thoughts. Now, when you ask the question about this person that is in your life and whether you should date or marry, if you're asking God, you're going to wait and let God respond. If you're asking God about when or where to move, you're going to wait and let God respond. If you don't wait, then you are entertaining your own ideas. If you wait and hear from God, then you are entertaining God's idea. Now, people will say, and sometimes people ask this question, you know, as a basis for an excuse to do what they want to do. They'll say, well, how do I know when God answers? And how do I know if God is, is giving me the answer or if I'm coming up with the answer on my own? You know, that is to suggest that God is not a good communicator. 
That is, that's to suggest that God possibly don't know how to talk to you to convince you that he's talking. Now, are you serious? Really? God, if, if he desires to communicate to you, and he does, and when he communicates to you, if you're listening, if you're not cluttered with a bunch of noise from all directions, then you're going to hear clearly God's voice in the matter. It's not a matter of whether or not God is speaking. It's a matter of whether or not you are listening and you're hearing. And so as in the case of this man, he didn't wait. I've had conversations with people before, and they've asked me questions similar to this. What should I do? I say, well, listen, just ask God and let him, and let him tell you, and, and he'll tell you what to do. Uh, one person I remember talking to about this uh, was distraught because he just simply didn't know what to do with his life and which direction to go in. Um, and, and he was literally distraught to the point of tears. And I said, there's an easy answer to this. The reason you're at this place in life is because you have not asked God. You have not even talked to him about it. Am I right or wrong? He says, you are absolutely right. I say, so, so stop carrying yourself through all of this turmoil and just simply go talk to God and let him talk to you and direct you, and he will. In one case, one young man says, I don't want to hear what God has to say right now. I already know what he's going to say. I don't want to hear what he has to say right now because I'm going to be responsible to, to go with God's idea <laughs> and not my own idea. One young man literally came up to me after church one time and he says, I can't come back to this church. I said, why not? He says, because the way you teach the word makes me responsible and I'm not ready to be responsible. And I thought to myself, at least he's honest about it. So this man asked the question, but he answered it for himself. He did not allow God to speak to his heart. And his answer gave him an out. But here's the danger in that, when you're trusting your own heart for the answer. Here's the danger when you let yourself answer the question that you don't know the answer to. It's in Jeremiah 17 and verse 9. In the Amplified Translation, it says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and it is exceedingly perverse and corrupt and severely mor mortally uh, sick. And it goes on, it says, Who can know it? Who can perceive the heart? Who can understand? Here's another way to say it. Who can trust his own heart? Who can be acquainted with his own heart and his own mind. That's just simply saying that you have no business trusting your own heart and your own mind. Then the Bible tell us in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, do not lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God. In other words, put everything you're debating in life on the table and let God speak to it. And he will speak to it, and he'll speak to it clearly. If you'll just leave it alone, if you'll stop deliberating it, let him speak to it. Don't let other people speak to it. Let him speak to it. Now, if God tells you in speaking to it to speak to a person or, 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 or whatever, then do that because there's probably answer in that, in that conversation that he's asking you to have with someone. But God is clear in his speech and in his communications with you. But you got to find yourself a place of rest and a place of peace, a place of quiet because God it's hard to hear God when you're engulfed in noise, when you're engulfed in a multitude of voices all around you saying all different sorts of things, when you are allowing yourself to be perplexed, when you are allowing confusion to set in your heart. And sometimes people unconsciously allow confusion because they don't really want clarity at that particular time in life. But he says, do not trust your heart because it is deceitful. So sometimes we convince ourselves of our own ideas because we are approaching it with an abundance of logic and an abundance, an abundance of rationale. Let's look what this man said to himself. Let's listen to see how he answered his own question. In verse 19, it says, 
So I will say to my soul, I will speak to myself, I will say to my soul, soul, you have many good things laid up, enough for many years, take it easy, eat, drink, enjoy yourself merrily. So this was his answer. I'm going to build bigger barns. I'm going to tear down my current barns, which are perfectly fine. I just don't have enough room to hoard. You see, if he would have yielded to God's idea, it wouldn't have been about him hoarding more. It would have been about him, what? That's right, giving more. In other words, he had borns already that, that were sufficient for him, but his harvest exceeded his capacity to store. Now, that is not always a bad thing. Sometimes we want to increase our capacity, but when that is for a purpose towards ad, ad, ad advancing and enhancing God's kingdom, not hoarding and storing up. He was building bigger barns to hoard, and that's not God's idea. God's idea is never about you hoarding and, and operating out of greed towards yourself. And if he would have listened to God, it would have been something along the lines of distribution and giving. And we can say that with confidence because of God's nature that is clearly displayed throughout the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, where the distribution of good, of the good of God toward humanity is concerned. He makes us agents of that distribution. Now, so he says, now... Here's his rationale. You know, you've worked hard. Uh, you, you've, 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 uh, you have, you've made it well. What we call it, self-made wealth, self-made millionaire. You've, you've earned this. You've done this. This is yours. He says, now you can sit back and relax for many years, and take it easy, and just party and drink and and enjoy yourself, take vacations every month, and just have a good old time, and, and just, just, just take care of you. Now, do you think God is opposed to you enjoying your life? No, he's not. As a matter of fact, he's an advocate of you enjoying your life, but not at the expense of selfishness, not at the expense of ignoring his will for your life, and not at the expense of ignoring his guidance for you to impart the blessing in another direction. Not, not that you would trust God to increase and then close your fists and refuse to listen and hear God in terms of how to distribute. It's amazing to watch people come to God with zero, increase as they come to know God and operating in the principles of God, and then once abundance starts coming in, then they start separating themselves away from God, away from the word, even away from the church, and away, and, and away from guidance by the Holy Spirit, because they know that now that they've increased more and more, just like the scripture said they would, comes the responsibility to distribute more and more. But that's not to your diminish. It's to your gain. And what happened here, this man just did not want to hear it. And so, now that he's spoken to himself, on the other side of this, now God speaks to him. But God said to him, you fool, this very night, they, the messengers of God, will demand your soul of you and all the things that you have worked for, all the things that you have prepared, all the things you've toiled for, whose will they be? Because they will not be yours. So it is with the one who continues to lay up and hoard possessions for himself and yet is not rich in his relation to God. This is how he fares. So from this, 
what we learn is that we don't want to sit around and talk ourselves out of God's idea. Talk ourselves into our own idea. Talk ourselves out of God's idea. Do you know that God's idea is designed to bring you into more abundance? Yes, to more increase, into more opportunities to be blessed and to bless others. Yes, more and more, more and more. There's no such thing as the blessing running out. He will increase you. Psalm 115, 14, no, 114, 15. 115, 14, maybe they'll put it up on the screen. He will increase you more and more and more. And more is the implication of that scripture. You and your children. In other words, you and your posterity will be blessed because you honor God. So he ultimately made himself feel really good about the possible outcomes of proceeding with his own ideas. He, he justified it. He, he laid it out. He says, see, I'm not hurting anyone, and, and I'll give a little here, and I'll bless somebody every now and then, you know? But ultimately, his increase was all about him. That was his idea. It was not God's idea. God's idea was to bless him. God's idea was to increase him. God's idea was to increase him to such a degree that he could absorb the deficit of his own nation. How about that? But we limit God in his dealings with us. We cap, we cap ourselves and we cut God off from the possibilities that are awaiting us. But you are not going to let that happen to you. You're going to ask the question, and you're going to let God provide the answer. What shall I do? Should I proceed with this move to this new job? Should I proceed with this opportunity that has come to me, but that will shift me into another location of the world? Should I proceed with this relationship? Is this of you, Lord? Is this really you? And is this what you want me to do? And you will let God answer those questions for you as you lay it before him and wait for him. Yeah. And it won't be long. Within moments in some cases, maybe days in other cases, or maybe when you're ready to receive the answer in other cases, God will speak to your heart and you'll know clearly and exactly what to do. One person told me a week ago, he says, I'm just experiencing some confusion about this. And I say, well, we know where that's coming from, right? The Bible makes it clear that confusion doesn't come from God. Confusion comes from the enemy. God gives clarity. And most people fail to receive that because they don't rest. They're too anxious to get it. You can't be anxious and receive from God. You have to rest. Yeah, God, you said you would give me clarity. Well, I received that in Jesus' name, and I'm not going to fret over it, and I'm not going to make any hasty decisions until I'm experiencing your clarity regarding this particular situation in my life. You don't owe anybody a rush decision. No. You're journeying with God. Let him walk with you. Let him talk with you. And he will give you the clarity that you need to go with his idea and not your own. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for your time tonight. And until next time, next week, this time, this is Dr. Norman Thomas saying, keep walking by faith. Dreaming is one of the most important things that you can do in your life. You were actually born for it. You were designed by God to dream because it engages the imagination. God gave you that imagination so that you could literally see what he says. God has big, big plans for you. He's got big things that he desires for you to do, but nothing can come to you 
except it first comes through you. So don't let anything and don't let anybody stop you from dreaming. Dream big and dream big on purpose. Easter Sunday is one of the most attended church days of the year. It is a celebration of the resurrection of Christ. So let us use this day as an opportunity to share Jesus with those we know. Invite your family and friends. We will also share in communion. Hello, this is Dr. Norman Thomas. It has been said that this is the year of restoration in the body of Christ. That means everything lost, everything stolen, must be given back. But the first area of restoration has to happen in a particular area. It's the restoration of the soul. I am beginning a new series in Power Talk called Spirit, Soul, and Body. And I am going to be joined by a panel of distinguished guests. My wife, Dr. Debbie Thomas, the clinical therapist, and she's going to help us understand the importance of the soul in the process of restoration. And then I have Dr. Antonio Rivera, a chiropractic specialist, who will also help us understand the response of the body to the spirit and the response of the body to the soul. It's time to live a healthy life. We're living in some very, very challenging days. But I don't believe that that should prevent us from moving forward and progressing in life. I do believe that as the spirit of a man goes, so goes his soul and his body. I can't wait for you to join me for this series. Join Dr. Norman Thomas for Power Talk, Tuesday nights at 6.30 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook. Spirit, Soul, and Body. Episodes air February 16th. Giving is simple and secure. If you'd like to give, just text the word GIVE to our giving number and tap the link. From here, you can give any amount you'd like. Choose what you give to and make it a one-time or recurring gift. It's that simple. For your first time, you'll need to register to complete your gift. After that, you can give again, anytime, anywhere. Just text the word GIVE. 